everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to talk about pretty much what everyone has been asking me how do I become a data analyst how do I become a data scientist um, what are the difference between the two and the compensation so today's video I'll be addressing all of that I'll go over the differences between a data analyst data engineer data scientist and an ml engineer as well which is also part of the data field so a little bit of a background about myself i have recently switched into data analyst field after working as an engineer for about seven years and i absolutely love it it was the best decision ever i'm getting paid twice as much as i did when i was working as an engineer and i rather prefer dealing with data and doing mental work instead of doing hands-on work. I graduated with a chemical and bioengineering degree, just a bachelor from McMaster University, and I worked in manufacturing engineer, and then I worked as a product engineer for landing a job as a data analyst. A lot of the stuff that I'll be talking about today is from you know what I've learned in the data field, uh, the people that are around me that are in data and mostly from my boyfriend who is a data scientist turned machine learning lead. So a bit about his background, he also did engineering as well. He did a bachelor in electrical and computer engineering and then he did a master's in electrical and computer engineering. And then after he graduated, he just went into the scientist and recently he landed a new job as machine learning lead. So I'll tell you about the differences, um, what machine learning is, and he helped me with putting together a lot of the questions that I had as well about the data field in this video. If you have any questions after this video, let me know in the comment section below. If I can't answer it, I'm pretty sure he can. At the end of this video, I'll also talk about tips and websites that you can apply to to help you land a job in data. Um, there are different types of websites, not just LinkedIn and Indeed. Um, there are websites specific to internships if you can't find a paying job, at least to get experience, and websites for new grads. So if you are not interested in the rest of this video, I think at least that is pretty important if you're trying to land a job. So I'll put the timestamps below so you can watch specific parts of this video that interests you. There is also a big difference between how regular companies structure these data positions compared to how a big tech company like Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, how they structure these positions. And the pay scale is obviously very different. Um, so I'll talk about that as well. So data is a relatively new field, right? So it's been evolving, it's changing, and as time goes on, it will continue to keep changing. And just five years ago, there were no machine learning engineer position at all. Data is the central intelligence hub between tech and business. A lot of the decisions now, um, you know, back then, there were a certain steps of rules that you follow to help make decisions for the business, but now, Businesses are all relying on data and the more data they collect, the more they're able to make decisions. So a lot of companies are paying good money to hire these data people to help make these decisions because that is where the money is at. If you decide to go into data, there is definitely a lot of opportunities. I felt like when I switched into data, there were just a lot more opportunities or a lot of learning experiences. I'm constantly learning new things every day, which I absolutely love. Um, and there's new softwares and languages that I'm learning and I just feel like I'm actually learning something that is a really that is a really desired skill set that not a lot of people have with this new skill set that I obtained I feel like I have so many more options if I want to switch companies if I want to do something else um, than I did when I was working as an engineer I also want to note that um, all of these four different positions, you need at least an undergrad to get in. It's really hard to get in if you don't have a formal education. It would be easier if you have a STEM degree, so something in math, engineering, science, to get in. Uh, business, I, I think like for some, maybe like data analyst or data engineer, you can have a business degree, but even then I think that it is actually quite 
hard um, without a STEM degree. Most employers do prefer people with a STEM degree. The reason being is because math and engineering and statistics is a lot different than math and business. So when you're doing data, most of the math is more similar to the engineering math than business math because business people view math in a really different way than engineers view math. And that is why employers prefer people who have an engineering background, who have a math or statistic background to do data work. So let's start with data analysts. So I'm a data analyst. I'll tell you how I got in. I actually made a more detailed video about that, but I'll just give you a high level in general, how I got in. Um, and the starting salary is around $66,000. I don't know why Glassdoors and online is giving a number that is a lot lower than this and saying the average is around $62,000. Everyone I know that is in data, even as a data analyst, is making a lot more than that um, as a starting position because I am an entry level and I started and I'm making six figures. Um, the average is around $82,000 um in canada so i do understand smaller companies uh, that are not tech will pay a lot less and um, in tech companies well i'll talk about that later because they structure things a little bit differently but i think glassdoor and what you're finding online might be a little bit misleading because a uh, data analyst actually does make a lot more than what you see online what data analysts do is that they do the visualization um like the graphs and the charts they do the reporting um, they try to solve business questions and present it in a story, most of the time in a dashboard form. Have good communication because you need to be able to tell the story using these data as well. In data, you really just need to know SQL and some sort of visualization tool, whether that be Tableau or Power BI. You can also use Excel, but with the amount of data now, like people use Tableau or Power BI. Data analyst is the lower compensation of the other data positions um, because you don't really need to know a lot of coding. Uh, sometimes it's good that a data analyst knows Python, but not necessarily have to. You can get in without knowing Python at all. When I was doing my interviews for a data analyst position, you need to know basic statistics. You need to have an undergrad for being STEM, like I mentioned, the skills I recommend you learn is SQL. There's a lot of practice questions online. WC3 School is one of them that I use when I was trying to get into this field where I just practice SQL queries. Um, it doesn't really get too complicated. It's SQL, it's not Python. The most complicated thing you'll probably encounter is join. The more complex questions will come to you with more practice. I also suggest learning Tableau or Power BI. Uh, I use Power BI. There is a free version of Power BI you can download from their website and you can just watch tutorials online, which is what I did. To use Power BI, DAX expressions is very helpful. It helps you manipulate the data easily and it's very just a very useful expression to you. I also learned that by watching YouTube videos and I also practice DAX expression. So you can find that in the OWL site, I believe it was, um, where I just went through all of the DAX questions. And after I completed that, um, I think I know DAX quite well. In my current job, I use a software called NIME to clean data. And in NIME, I use basic SQL queries. Sometimes I use Python to clean the code that is really messy, but I don't use it all too often. And for reporting and dashboards, I use Power BI and Excel. Uh, lately, I've been using mostly Power BI because it's just more powerful. It can handle a lot more data. So that is the one I prefer to use. And I also use DAX expression, as I mentioned, in Power BI. So the second position is a data engineer. Data engineers are starting is around $80,000. The average is around $90,000. So they're just about like 10% higher than a data analyst. Um, but data engineer is actually probably one of the easiest to get into because you don't really need to know statistics or math. You just need to learn how to code. So anyone can. 
the work in data engineer though is probably the most uninteresting and it is not sexy at all you're literally just trying to take data and get it from a to b so it's just a lot of cleaning the data to make it more useful so to be a data engineer you really just need to know sql you don't necessarily need to know python it is probably preferred that you know python but i've seen data engineers just using sql and not knowing how to use python interesting about data engineering is that i've seen people with life science degrees becoming a data engineer uh, people of art degree becoming an engineer or business um, degree people become a data engineer uh, i don't necessarily believe that you need to have a stem degree to be a data engineer because you need to know how to code that's pretty much it people who are in this field that are data engineer correct me if i'm wrong essentially what data engineers do is that they work on etl pipeline so they are moving data from one place to another and applying some transformation to it since my company is kind of small we don't have a data engineer so i do work on cleaning the data because i don't have a data engineer to do it for me you will find that as i talk about these positions there's a lot of overlap in the skills so just because you're a data analyst doesn't mean you don't need to necessarily know the skills of a data engineer and if you're a data engineer it doesn't mean you don't necessarily need to know the skills of a data analyst and a lot of companies that are small and they can't hire uh, someone to do these specific roles there will be a lot of overlapping and you will be doing roles as data engineer or data scientist or a uh, or a data scientist doing an ML engineer role. So now we get into the more interesting side of data, which is the AI side. And this is where all the big companies are pretty much focused on. It's a field that my boyfriend works in and he talks a lot about this field. So I actually know quite a bit about this field without actually working in this field. The starting salary is around $90,000 a year and the average is around $120,000 a year. Within data science, there are two things, research versus real world application. The more real world application goes into machine learning and the more theoretical goes into the data science. Different companies will structure it differently, which I'll talk about later, especially FANG companies. They have their own way of doing things and structuring these positions. One way to get into data science is you can get in from working as a data analyst, but you will need to learn um, coding, not just SQL. You need to know Python and need to know machine learning. And these things could be learned on a job as a data analyst. I've been getting a lot of people who reach out to me asking, how do I get into data science from an engineering degree? And the background is a bachelor's in engineering degree trying to get into data science. This is actually very, very difficult to get into. I tried doing that myself as well and it was not successful. I only have a bachelor in engineering and the best I could do was land a data analyst position. The reason being, and I don't think a lot of people know this unless you are in the field of data science, is that data science requires you to have a higher education than just a bachelor. You need to have a master's or a PhD and a lot of people have PhDs. If you did a master's, is preferably that you did a master's in research. So if you have an engineering degree and you did an MEng, it doesn't really help. But if you have a master's in MASC, which is a research master's, that will help a lot. It will help even more if you are a published researcher when you did your master's. Data analysts only possess half of the skills that these data scientists have. So there's a lot of overlapping and a data scientist can do everything that a data analyst could do. Don't bother going into heavy research data scientist position unless you have a PhD, because that is very hard to get into. What machine learning is, is that it is a technique that data scientists use to help them build models. These are models that help them predict things. So predict when a person dies, uh, when a person will default on their credit card, and it uses a lot of AI. So this is where you branch into the artificial intelligence uh, side of things. 
um, and big companies like Fang on Facebook, they're trying to get you hooked on your uh, phone and your device. So they're trying to figure out how to make you click on it and, and stay on the phone longer. And this is where machine learning and AI comes from. It is incredibly complex. It seems very um, easy on the surface level, but once you actually build this model, it becomes really complex. That is why they require people who have a higher education. People with PhD go into research scientists. And if you have a PhD, you won't be watching this video because you already know what to do. I believe that in the future, bare bones data scientists will be eliminated where you just do data science stuff. Nowadays, it's starting to become more popular that data scientists need to know software things as well. There is a saying in the data sciences community that there is this thing called a unicorn data scientist, where you are very good in both data science and software. This is a joke in the data community because it, there's nobody in the community who have really truly mastered being really good at data science and software as well. It is very hard to find someone who can stitch together all the data and tech to create value. So if you can master these two things, then you are pretty much a unicorn data scientist and a lot of companies will hire you and you'll get a really good compensation. So to give you a little bit of an idea of how my boyfriend landed in a data science field, he did undergrad in electrical engineering and then did a master's in research in electrical and computer engineering. And then with, he did an internship in data science and what really helped him was that he published a research article in the IEEE journal as a first author. And if you are in academia, then you know that first author means essentially that you are the, the main contributor to that research paper um, and the rest of the other authors that follow have just validated your work and read over your work and checked your work. So being a first author is actually very important and so he published that and i believe that is one of the main reasons that helped get him into a data scientist position even if he doesn't have a phd so if you only have an undergrad and you really want to do data science and you don't want to go the data analyst route then the best suggestion is to do a master's in research and getting in from there there are a lot of master's programs that i'm seeing recently um that have masters of data analytics. So I think that helps as well. I've seen people doing that and landing a job in data science right after. Queens was actually the first program that had this MMA program, which is the masters of management analytics. Once you graduate with that, your starting salary is pretty much $200,000 a year. If I had known about this field and this route, I would have definitely done it. I would definitely have gone into master of data analytics or an MMA. Um, by the time I have discovered this, I was already, I already got a mortgage. <laughs> so it felt like it was too late for me, but I wish I had discovered this a lot sooner, preferably right after I graduated and realized I really hated my job and have done this. I also want to note that I made a video about doing the data scientist certificate. It doesn't really help a lot or at all in landing a job as a data scientist. Um, as I mentioned, master's or PhD is a way to go, or if you are a data analyst who know these things, um, probably worked in a few years, gained these skills as a data scientist, but otherwise that data scientist certificate is pretty much useless. All right, so now we go into the machine learning aspect of this video. So machine learning, you are starting off at around $100,000 a year. On average, you're making $150,000 a year. If you're in big tech companies, you're making a lot more than this. <laughs> As I mentioned before, machine learning is a technique that data scientists use to build models and they live closer to the business side. Machine learning engineer needs more real work. And this includes the old software education and strong software skills. So what they do is they productionalize the model and everything that happens after productionalization. And machine learning engineers live closer to the tech side. There is more demand for machine learning engineer 
than data scientists. They are the heaviest demand, mostly in tech companies, which I'll go into details later. To get into machine learning, there are three things. First is software heavy, second is research heavy, and the third part is a generalistic data scientist that builds model that can communicate almost like a data analyst hybrid. The general public recommend machine learning as the way to go because it is the most expensive one and they compensate very well. So you need to get really good software skills and the regular data scientist knowledge and skills. So if you're a data scientist, you just need to learn software skills to get into this field. So now I will talk about regular companies and big tech companies and the differences. In regular companies, um, you have the data analyst, the data engineer, the data analyst, they does all the analysis. They know about machine learning, but they don't necessarily need to do it like me. They do the statistical analysis, the SQL, and data scientists, which they do all the machine learning models, but they also do analysis as well. But generally, data scientists are more machine learning focused in regular companies. And in regular companies, machine learning engineers are usually done by data scientists. There are not a lot of machine learning engineer positions in non-tech companies. So now about the big tech companies, they don't have data analysts. The data scientists are pretty much doing the data analyst work. What they do is they do the visualization, the queries, pretty much normally what data analysts do. They have research scientists that are research focused on the latest machine learning algorithm. Then you have the machine learning engineer slash applied data scientists. What they do is that they build the models and see it from end to end. So they see it from the start to production. And this role is very similar to a data scientist in non-tech companies, but they require more skills. All right, so I think I kind of covered um, everything you kind of need to know about the different positions in data. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to get back to you. I'm going to go over the tips and things that will help you when you're job searching. Um, I just want to say that at the end of the day, it is what you're interested in and what you're good at. I also want to note that I didn't put any ceiling for how much or what is the maximum on these positions because there really is no maximum. I know people who entered into tech companies, they start around $200,000 and that's entry level. Um, and I know several people who are making $500,000 and one person who is making a million dollars a year as a data engineer. It's hard for me to really say what is the maximum for tech. Um, I don't think there's really any ceiling for these, but I just need to let you know that you won't be making this kind of money in a regular company. Something that I wish I had known earlier when I was looking for jobs is that where you apply actually helps with their chances of getting in. So it costs employers money to post the job positions on the website and LinkedIn actually charges the most. But also in LinkedIn, you are getting a lot of people who have a lot more experiences. So if you're applying to jobs on LinkedIn, the competition is more fierce. Um, so it may not necessarily be the best place if you are just a beginner or a new grad looking for a job. If you are looking for a beginner entry level, then you should look at um, Angelist, Indeed, and monster indeed of the three is probably have the most competition for paid internship sites um you can search on careeredge.ca for startups you should try searching for jobs at angel.co slash location slash toronto for new grads um i would try talenteggs.ca so that's pretty much it for the end of my video. I really hope that you learned something um, and that it satisfy your curiosity about the data field, how to get in, what you need to do, um, and hope it helps you decide how to enter into this field if you are trying to get in. And if you haven't already, if you can subscribe to my channel, it will definitely help me with making more videos. If you have any questions um, or ideas on what we can make a video on, let me know and I will 
on that as well. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!